Welcome back guys. Uh, let's talk about SOS repair in this video. It is a very very important type of repair mechanisms and I don't find much of the videos in the internet. So let's make a video on it. So what is SOS repair? You know SOS repair is obviously it's a good thing for a cell because there are certain genes that are present in cell that are called SOS genes. And those SOS genes are responsible to prevent the damage especially the DNA damage. So they are responsible entirely in kind of DNA damage repair. DNA damage repair. That's what the function of SOS repair. So let's begin with it. Let's say these are the SOS genes, right? And SOS gene stands for preventing the DNA damage. So whatever DNA damage is encountered, for example, suppose via UV radiation or oxidative stress or something like that. So during that time, DNA has to be rep repaired. And for repairing DNA, we can rely on nucleotide excision repair. We can rely on base excision repair, methyl, sorry, methyl mismatch repair, MMR. So these are the different repair mechanisms that we can use, that a cell can use uh, to prevent uh, to actually repair the DNA. So, but, but producing all the necessary proteins that are there in NERBAR or MMR, whatever type of repair, there is a control mechanism of producing all those necessary repair proteins. And there is a master gene and master operon that actually controls the, the synthesis of all the important proteins necessary for nucleotide excision repair or base excision repair and so on. And those operon system is controlled by the SOS gene, right? For example, uh, there are there is a there is a specific gene called Lex, Lex A, right? Lex is a particular type of operon that controls the synthesis of genes that will ultimately produce proteins for NERBAR, MMR, and all this type of DNA repair, right? So in this case, say Lex A is there. And Lex A acts like a dimer, right? And once the Lex A is there, it acts kind of as a repressor. And that Lex A will block the synthesis of SOS genes. As you can see here, Lex A as a dimer is inhibiting, inhibiting the synthesis of SOS genes, right? So, for making the SOS genes activated, we need to break this Lex A dimer. Once we break the Lex A dimer, it no longer remains functional. It will activate the SOS genes and ultimately it will trigger the DNA repair mechanisms. Right? So this is the whole funda of this process. Lex A dimer inhibiting the SOS genes, the synthesis of SOS genes. Right? And when we need to activate these SOS genes? when we require the DNA damage to be repaired, right? So suppose there is a particular type of DNA damage is occurring. And that DNA damage will signal some molecules, will, will produce certain molecules, will activate certain molecules, which deactivates Lexa, right? And the deactivation means the breaking down of Lexa. And that's what can be achieved. That's called the auto cleavage because this leg say it cleaves itself and then the single monomers can activate the SOS gene because the leg say is having a very remarkable structure. It has one activated domain and one repressor domain. Once the repressor is attached to the activator, the activator is no longer functional. But when it is auto cleaving itself, activator becomes free and that activator is now ready to work on the SOS gene synthesis. Right? I mean SOS gene, uh, not synthesis, but SOS gene transcription. Right? And that thing can be achieved via activation of a protein called REC A. And REC A is only active when there is any kind of DNA damage is sensed or if there is any kind of replication stalling. You know, stalling of replication means replication is halted. So if there is any replication halting or if there is any sensation of DNA damage, in that condition only, REK-A becomes activated and REK-A helps to provide the signal to Lex-A and Lex-A auto-cleave itself 
activator is free it will go and help in transcribing SOS genes and replication is stalled or DNA becomes damaged it only happens in the in, in any kind of SOS gene response you know like UV radiation it can be oxidative stress and so on so ultimately they will uh, they will break them down activate REC, REC activates LEX and LEX activates the SOS genes okay now let's see the next slide a little bit more details so again we have the promoter I mean we have the upper I mean complete operon system there sorry one minute okay so we have the complete operon system com consisting of lex A which produce lex A protein and the O lex which is the operator and promoter of lex right the promoter of lex and if you look at the production of lex A as you can see here it is consisting of two units one is the repressor unit in red and the activator unit in yellow once the repressor is attached to the activator the activator is repressed right so it will no longer function that dimer can go and sit onto the promoter of lex and can repress the lex A synthesis right but if there is uh, due to any kind of DNA damage so if there is no DNA damage this repressor so let me say if there is no DNA damage the repressor with activator so the Lex A dimer is active it will sit onto the Lex promoter and the Lex A synthesis is halted but if there is any kind of DNA damage right so that breakdown content of the DNA can come and attach to this Lex A dimer as those DNA segment binds to the Lex A dimer it activates the Lex as a result the activator unit of the Lex is just cleaved away repressor is cleaved away now the activator part of that Lex can go and can transcribe all those genes necessary for the DNA repair mechanisms for example the genes called UVRA which is required for error free DNA re repair and also UMUD e e or UMUD whatever so these are all required for the repair mechanisms like nucleotide excision repair base excision repair the, and, and we also have methyl mismatch repair right so these are the repair and these are the enzymes that are required for all these repairs and those become activated because the promoter is now free Lex operon is active and all those genes are being produced right so this is in you know, overall view of SOS repair